Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks at TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about a, a question I get commonly asked in various ways is, well, but that's the Old Testament talking about riches and being blessed and the blessing of the Lord makes rich. That's not for New Testament saints. In the New Testament, we only have to worry about spiritual riches. Now this is stated for two different reasons. One is the people have been taught wrong and that they're somehow more spiritual or holy or whatever it may be if they have less then they sometimes pretend like oh their failure in life their mediocrity the fact they aren't doing their all unto the lord so they don't get good results that that is somehow spiritual they're somehow more enlightened by having nothing and doing nothing and being nothing but that's just not true but the other reason is that Sometimes it is just simply an excuse. It's hard to look at oneself and see mediocrity and failure and that you could be doing more, but you're not. And not want to change it, not want to say something spiritually wrong with me because I'm not doing everything I could do. So instead it gets pawned off as, well, God doesn't want me to be rich. God doesn't want me to have nice things. He wants me just to have a little for me and my family. And as I've stated so many times, and I'm gonna keep stating, that is the most selfish, wicked, evil mentality anyone could have. Just enough for me and mine. It's so selfish, so self-absorbed. Only caring about themselves, only caring about their family. Not wanting to have an abundance, you don't have to have a bunch of things, that doesn't matter. But if you become more, and you do more, and you have more, you can give more, you can be a bigger blessing. You don't have to consume upon your own lust. That's not what I'm talking about here. But if all you have is enough for you and your family, you can't help anyone else. You can't be a blessing. And it's even worse if you're in need because then you're just taking in, you're not even giving out. This is why I encourage people to become successful, become rich, not so they can have a bunch of things, not so they can have a bunch of zeros in their bank account, but so that they can be better blessings to the world. And yes, they can have some nice things as well, but that's not what it's all about. Because you can't be a giver, someone who's blessing and not receive back. You said give and it shall be given unto you. That's a simple law. That's the law of the universe. You sow a seed in the ground, you get a harvest, not of one seed again, but that plant grows and produces sometimes hundreds or thousands of seeds from the one you sowed. But this idea that the New Testament equals poverty, the Old Testament was about material things because they just weren't spiritual enough, but now in the New Testament, it's just spiritual riches which I don't even know what that is. That could be, that's so vague, it could be anything. Are they talking about salvation? Are they talking about thinking a certain, what are they talking about? It's so vague because it's purposely vague because it just means I don't want to deal with the fact that my material failure in life is a sign of my spiritual poverty. So I just want to pretend that my failure in life is a good thing it's actually spiritual riches but in 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 we get this very important point for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich this isn't talking about spiritual riches spiritual poverty this is talking about material things because you read earlier in the chapter he's talking about people who were poor at that time and yet they were still giving. They were still being blessings. And then you read in the next chapter, so he's continuing his thought, and he talks about if you sow, you're gonna reap, God's gonna give a harvest. And then God gives you the seed to sow, and when you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. All talking about material things. Now, this isn't trying to get you focused on material things only, but to let you know that when you try to divide and separate the spiritual from material as if they're somehow separate in different parts of life or maybe not even part of your life at all it just doesn't work when you sow seed you give you're generous you're kind 
you're abundant in your giving, you're bountiful in your giving, you're going to reap bountifully. Materially, not just some future spiritual reaping and riches and all this stuff that people try to pretend. Because that's not tangible. You can't measure that. You can claim, oh, I have st I've stored up so much, so many riches in heaven. But you can't measure that. They could be the most wicked, evil person at heart, but they can claim things you can't see and you can't measure. But you can't take a lazy person and look at their life and see the lack and not see the spiritual failing there. Not because they don't have a bunch of things, but because they're not living up to the fullest potential they have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they're not doing their all unto the Lord. This is what it really always gets back to. The success, the prosperity, the abundance is you living a life to the fullest extent that you can, living it unto the Lord. You don't go into work for someone else and complain about the boss behind their back, whine about the customers, complain about this, complain about that. You do your all, you do it unto the Lord, and you get great results from that. You give bountifully and you get a bountiful harvest back. Yes, Jesus came for you to have spiritual riches, whatever that may entail in your mind. But he also came for you in this life to have a hundredfold result, to have blessings, to have abundance. That if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. And none of those things he was talking about there in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, were spiritual. It was all material things because it was the things that the Gentiles were seeking after. God's not leaving you in lack. He's not leaving you in want. He, the Lord is your shepherd you shall not want. Not because you put away your wants and just float around claiming spirituality in your poverty and degradation. No, because he gives you abundantly, richly, freely of all good things to enjoy. And in turn, you can also bless others with that abundance. You can't do that if you don't have abundance. You can't do that if you're only thinking about yourself, only thinking about your family, and don't care about anyone else. Sure, you can pretend to care about other people, but does your life exhibit that? Did you work that extra hour you could have worked, or did you just take off and go home? Did you put that extra effort in your day, thinking, no, I wanna do this right. I wanna do this unto the Lord. Or did you say, nah, it doesn't matter. I can do it some other time and put it off. Because this is the difference between poverty and riches. It's not a weakness on God's end. It never is. It's you receiving it and you doing and taking the action that he leads you to do. And I've seen so many people say, well, I thought I should do this, but you know, it's going to be hard. Or I have to go do this. Or, you know, I got this television program I want to watch. And all this stuff. That's just excuses for not living up to their fullest potential. And then wondering why they can't become rich. It's not God. God's not holding you back. God's not restricting you. There's not some new poverty gospel in the New Testament. Jesus came to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. What would that be? Except that you don't have to be poor anymore. You can accomplish more. There's, there's, Laws in place, given it shall be given to you. You can sow bountifully and you'll reap a bountiful harvest. He even gives you the seed to sow. He leaves nothing undone if you'll do it, if you'll take the action. You notice he gives you the seed to sow. He doesn't sow the seed for you. He gives the harvest, but you have to sow the seed. You have to take action. And that's where many people are lacking. If you want to become rich, you want to become successful in this life, God wants that for you as well, then you must take action. What is he leading you to do today? Do it. I don't care how simple it is, how minuscule it may be, do it. Or how big it may be, do it. Take action today. And you, my friend, will find that God wants you to be rich. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.